Let's go just it. Here is the FC RX-7 front knuckle. So <coughs> interesting thing is that the FCs are originally a front steer car. So say the front of the car is pointing this way, this way, this is the steering arm would be in front of the wheel. On the FB, it's entirely opposite, kind of like this. You have the front of the car going this way and the arm behind here. So <coughs> what happens is when this is sitting here, you have uh, some reverse Ackerman going on. And the reason <coughs> why you know it's um, reverse Ackerman is if you take a look at where the spindle would mount to the lower control arm, when it's Ackerman, there's gonna be an angle going this way. Um, so basically when an uh, ideal Ackerman is if you draw a line from this center of this circle through the center of the steering arm, it'll intersect at the center of the rear axle. So obviously if it's going out this way, they would the lines would never intersect. So uh, either with that, Ackerman's a huge thing in drifting um, and you can tell my knuckles I just had on the car had way too much Ackerman because the leading wheel on the when drifting or the inside wheel on a normal corner was turned way more than the outside wheel or the trailing wheel. So to correct that, you make it so that the line from the center of this circle to the center of this circle is in a straight line parallel with the wheels on the car. So you can see this is pretty close. It's actually a little bit of um, anti-Ackerman. So what I'm gonna do is when I shorten this up, and I'm not sure how much I'm gonna have to shorten it up, I'm going to move this so that it's not zero Ackerman, but very, very small amount of Ackerman. Something else that you should be mindful of when doing the steering is how the alignment's gonna affect things. So obviously the most drifting alignments, you run a little bit of toe out, like a 16th or an eighth at the most. And obviously that's gonna change your Ackerman a bit. So if you want to, you can like dial in your Ackerman somewhat with the toe in is not really recommended because the toe out is gonna help your turn in more so than anything. So I think with these, I'll take that into account when I model up my front suspension to show that like when I'm at like a 16th toe out, my, where, my Ackerman's where I want it to be. I think zero Ackerman I've heard, the car will drive really weird when you're normal grip and then like initiation. And I really actually liked how my car initiated once it was set up correctly. And then I think, I don't think I'm gonna like zero Ackerman. <sighs> Additionally, something to note is looking here, you can see something. This pivot point where the lower control arm or where the knuckle mounts the lower control arm is forward. If the car was pointing this way, like it will be something my car is actually forward somewhat of this um, center line of the axle. So what this creates is some caster trail, which is something that um, a lot of the like pro knuckles you'd see like in an FD car Part Shop Max, Wise Fab, <coughs> excuse me, some of the other companies have, they're gonna have some caster trail built into the knuckle, and this already has it, so I don't have to modify. I'm gonna play around, see how I like it. Uh, it's not a whole lot. I know like the Part Shop Max ones are really exaggerated, and basically what that means is that with caster trail, you don't have to put as much caster into the car, and when you don't put as much caster into the car, you don't have to run as much of a negative camber to get the contact patch of the tire flat when the um, car is at lock or at big angle, basically. I know that probably sounds real, really um, complicated, but as you turn, like say you're going to, uh, you're drifting a right-hand turn and you're counter steering, this is your leading wheel. As you, as you turn this, the contact patch is gonna to wanna to go this way, um, just inherent physics. And when you add more camber, obviously you, and it's leaned back, 
it pivots like this, so you need to add more camber to get it flatter. But with the caster trail, you don't have to add as much camber. So it'll be really interesting to see how the car sits. Like I'm gonna get the everything probably tacked together and then put it at ride height, turn the wheel full lock, and see what my um like see how much camber or static camber I have to uh, put in the car to get like a nice flat contact patch. So a lot of big things coming. Um, I know that was probably super nerdy, drifting discussion, um, but that's definitely something I'm trying to drive home here is like helping educate people on some of the uh, geometry and the engineering that goes into a drift car. Cause I don't think a lot of people realize it, that drifting, um, it really matters how you set your car up. You can make a big difference and be a lot more successful, especially when you're learning if you have the car set up properly. So actually to help this, I'm going to be, well, actually I've started a database. It's a Google Drive database on a spreadsheet. And uh, me and some other, my friends have entered in our setup info, like things like alignment, tires, tire size, the chassis we're running. Um, I'll post a link and if you guys are interested in that, um, please let me know. I'll add you to the spreadsheet, put your info in, or feel free just to view it. I know that I'm hoping that eventually we'll have like hundreds of cars in there and say you can filter by, all right, I've got an FBR X7 just like me and <clears throat> I wanna see what people are running at different power levels. So maybe you have someone that's running rotary and maybe there's someone with a V8 and you can compare see what their setups are and kind of you have a starting point and also have some note i'll have a spot for notes as well so you can uh jot down some driver notes and feel free to like i think what i'll do is once if i change my setup drastically i'm gonna put in another entry so that i have a database a data point to go back to um and play with as well so please let me know what you guys think about that um I know it's probably not going to interest everyone, but I want to help people um, in the drifting community and specifically people that are drifting FBR X7s because there's probably only a handful of us compared to the hundreds and thousands of, uh, probably not hundreds of thousands, but hundreds of people or thousands of people that drift like say uh, S chassis or FC. And there's, there's obviously a lot of info about that, but the <coughs> FBs themselves there's not a lot of info, so I'm trying to help you guys out. And then I also thought, obviously, a, a database can be a universal thing. And I really just help people understand um, car setup, car control, because I know everyone's not an engineer. And people just kind of like to not necessarily build their own stuff, but just <laughs> bolt things on and go. So hopefully that's not too boring. I know um, it's a little techy, but I know that there are like a growing number of people that have gotten into drifting. And I'm sure if you get more into drifting, you get more technical and you want to learn more. And there's really, like in this day and age, because the forums are dying out, there's not a whole lot of uh, area to go to. So please let me know if you're interested in contributing to the database. I'd love to have your info in there, even if you're, no matter what your skill level is, if you're a pro, if you're uh, running pro-am or just a beginner like me, the grassroots guy, um, S chassis, RX-7, BMW, it doesn't matter whatever you guys run because I'd just like to know more of what you guys are running and hopefully help you out with uh, your setup. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it was not too boring. And please let me know what you thought of it. I may do some more about the rear suspension because I'm doing a major rear suspension design as well. Honestly, I don't think there's enough technical uh, videos out there about drifting, so I'm hoping to add to that. So please like, comment, subscribe, and uh, have your friends watch this if they're interested in the technical part of drifting and nerd talk. See ya.